Unit 2 Transformations, Lesson 4 Rotations. Your objectives for this lesson are to describe transformations as functions, draw rotations, and use geometric descriptions of rigid motions to transform figures and to predict the effect of a given rigid motion on a given figure. Um, before we start this, I just want to say that tra not transformations, rotations, I think are the most difficult rigid transformation that we work with. So um, just keep that in mind while we're working through this material. A rotation is a transformation that turns all points of the plane around a point called the center of rotation. You could think of the tire on a car uh, here rotating about the center so it rotates on the axle that the tires are on. And the angle of rotation tells you the number of degrees through which points rotate around the center of rotation. So right here point P is the center of rotation. So that is what our triangle is rotating about. And this angle, the amount that it's rotated, is the angle of rotation. So it's how much it's rotated. Um, angle A, P, A prime. Okay. And a rotation is another type of rigid transformation, so it is an isometry. Okay. Another definition of a rotation is a transformation about a point P such that, one, every point and its image are the same distance from P, so everything's the same distance from P, and all angles with vertex P formed by a point and its image have the same measure. So basically everything is rotating the same amount. Okay, example one we will work with in class. This is another heavy duty construction. You see the protractor and compass out, but we will do this in class together. Okay, rules for rotations in a coordinate plane. These are more rules for you to memorize. You see a rotation of 90 degrees, x comma y becomes negative y x. A rotation of 180 degrees, x comma y becomes negative x negative y, so both signs are changing. Rotation of 270 degrees, x, y becomes y negative x. And the important thing about these uh, rotations to remember, and it's the same as before when you had these similar rules for reflection, is that a negative in front of an x or a y means change the sign. Okay, so if it was positive, it becomes negative. If it was negative, it becomes positive. It does not necessarily mean you will have a negative number. Positive means keep the sign. So keep whatever sign you had. If it was negative, it stays negative. Positive, it stays positive. Example two, draw the image of the figure after the given rotation. So we're rotating 180 degrees. Our rule for 180 degrees is x, y becomes the opposite of x comma the opposite of y. So let's figure out where our points are starting out. I have this one at 2, negative 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 2, 7, 3, 4, 5, negative 6, 
and one negative six. Okay. So my first point is at two negative two. And since both the signs are changing, I'm left with a negative two, positive two. Notice that this negative two is now positive. Even though this says negative y, this is the opposite of y. So I'm going to plot two, no, sorry, negative two, two, negative two, two. Okay. The next step, we have six, negative two. Flipping both signs, so this is negative six, positive two, three, four, five, six, right here. Seven, negative six, flip both signs. So we're at negative seven, comma six, right here. One, negative six, flip both signs. So we are at negative one, comma six, it's right up here. Okay. And connect the dots. Okay. And now you can see this is our rotated figure. We are rotating about the origin. So everything in the coordinate plane, you are rotating about the origin, unless you're told otherwise. Um, and you would expect 180 degrees that you would end up halfway around. And we did. Halfway around because the whole circle, or the whole coordinate plane, would be a 360 degree rotation. So this looks pretty good to me. Okay, rotating 90 degrees. Whenever you're rotating, you are rotating um, counterclockwise. So rotating 90 degrees, I'm expecting to have a figure move from quadrant two down to quadrant three, because again, we are rotating counterclockwise. Okay, so our rule for rotation is x comma y becomes negative y x. This is for a 90 degree rotation. So let me start out again by finding my vertices, my coordinates. So this guy here is at negative 3, 2. This is negative 2, 5. This is negative 4.57. And you can see it's kind of between those two uh, grid lines here. That can happen. It's fine. I'm saying 4.5 because it looks like it's halfway. And this is at negative 7, 5. Our last guy is at negative six two. Okay. So gonna start with the negative two comma five. And my new x coordinate is the opposite of y, so negative five, comma exactly what x is, negative two. negative 4.5 comma 7. My new x is the opposite of y, so negative 7 comma x, negative 4.5. Negative 7 comma 5, the opposite of y comma x. Negative 6 comma 2 opposite of y, so negative 2, comma x is negative 6. Negative 3, comma 2, opposite of y is negative 2, comma negative 3 is our x. Okay, so 
So I'm going to plot these all. Negative 2, comma, negative 3. Negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 6. Negative 5, 3, 4, 5. Negative 7. Negative 7. Negative 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And negative 5, comma, negative 2. Okay. Connecting the dots. And here's our rotated figure, rotated 90 degrees in quadrant 4, just like we expected. Okay. And I think this is, um, no, two more. Okay. Part C, rotating 270 degrees. So our rule for 270 degree rotation is x, y becomes y comma negative x. If I'm rotating, rotating 270 degrees, I think I'm going to be, well, this would be 90 180, 270. I think I'm going to be in quadrant 2 when I finish. Let's see what happens. So, just like before, finding all of our vertices first. This is at negative 2, negative 3. Negative 7, negative 1, 2, 3, 4. In negative 7, negative 5. Okay. And I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to label these A, B, and C. Okay. So point A is at negative 2, negative 3. This is point A. A prime, the image, is going to be y, which is negative 3, comma, the opposite of x, so 2. b is at negative 7, negative 1. b prime, we have the, well, the same y, so negative 1, and the opposite of our x would be a 7. C is at negative 7, negative 5. Moving to C prime, we'll have Y, which is negative 5, comma, the opposite of X, 7. Okay, so let's plot these three new points. Negative 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2. This is A prime. Okay, B, negative 1, 7, 2, 4, 6, 7, B prime. C prime, negative 5, 7, up here. C prime. Connect the dots. And I did rotate into quadrant 2, which is what I expected. So that, that's good. And you can, um, label your vertices like this. You should probably get into the habit actually of labeling the corresponding vertices. So notice that A rotated to be A prime. Um, so the ones that go together have the same letter, but the rotated figure has that little apostrophe, the, the prime marker. Okay, and one more for 180 degrees. So we have X, Y becomes negative x comma negative y. And I'm going to go ahead and label. This is 2, negative 2, and I'm going to call it a. 9, negative 2 will be b. And 2, 2 will be c. And since I'm rotating 180 degrees, 
I think this is just going to be the opposite side here. So half in quadrant 2 and half in quadrant 3 going over the x-axis. Okay, so point A is 2, negative 2. And A prime will have flipped signs. So negative 2, 2. B is at 9, negative 2. B prime will be at negative 9, positive 2. C is at 2, 2. C prime will be at negative 2, negative 2. So just flipping the sign of each one. So if I have negative 2, 2, that is here. So this is A prime. B prime is at negative 9, positive 2, so that's here. And C prime at negative 2, negative 2, right there. Okay, connect the dots. And I can see my new beautiful rotated triangle right here, exactly where I expected it to be. So that is rotating in the coordinate plane. We'll do some more rotations in class, but that is it for this lesson.